Ambassador Peter Amman, welcome to AICGS. Always good to have you here with us. Um, we're going to be in Berlin soon together, and I wanted to talk to you about TTIP. Mm -hmm. Everybody's trying to figure out whether there's a German uh, acronym that goes with that. I haven't quite figured that out yet. But, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but TTIP, the Transatlantic Trade and uh, Innovation Partnership, Investment Partnership, Investment Investment Partnership. Partnership means something very important. Uh, it meant something so important that Obama mentioned it in his State of the Union address. Uh, Chancellor Merkel has mentioned it. Everybody's talking about it. My question. We've been down this road a lot in the last mm -hmm. 20, 30 mm -hmm. years. Why is this time different? Why is this going to be more successful than other attempts have been? Yeah, good question, Jack, and good to be here. Uh, the answer is, uh, in a nutshell, the world has changed a lot. We are now a decade after September 11th, half a decade after Lehman, and we are in a situation where in the Western world in general, we need growth. And how could we produce growth? The uh, economic textbooks say, well, we could use uh, a, a Keynesian stimulus, but this is not feasible in a world where uh, government uh, budgets are in dire straits and we all cut on our deficits. We just do the opposite. So the other alternative which uh, economic theory offers us uh, would be a monetary stimulus. But here again, we have reached the limit. Uh, interest yeah. rates are almost down to zero. So the only option we all have still open is to uh, foster trade. And to do this, we need TTIP. And let me just add that you just slip off a tongue that uh, TTIP could also be a, 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 a partnership not only for, 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 for investment, but what did you say? For innovation. innovation. I think this is, this is just uh, perfect because the, we all have to fight vested interests in our systems, in our countries, uh, fight you know, uh, vested interests which stand against innovation, right. not in the technical sense, but in the sense of better governance. And how can we achieve this without uh, creating new, better regulation in, in, in large units uh, like the one which will, be comprises, will comprise the uh, European mainland and North America? 800 million, strong, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, let me say that on the one hand, that opens up an enormous opportunity, but it of course is involved with two hugely intertwined entities. The mm -hmm. European Union and the United mm -hmm. States have the largest trading block anyway. Yes, and, and to some extent, what goes along with that, and better, uh, you, you, you know that so well, domestic political interests go along with that. We're entwined that way as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let me ask, um, let me say the one side of the equation is opportunity. Other side of the equation is how do you overcome the obstacles that have been there in the past? Um, for example, uh, there's already discussion, I believe, in Europe about certain so-called red lines. Mm -hmm. France is worried about media. There are some people in Germany that are worried about things like GMOs. How do you anticipate that those problems can be overcome? I'm not saying it's easy. There will be, uh, of course, uh, many difficulties, uh, but we have to overcome them. And I think the, uh, the consensus is growing on both sides of the Atlantic that we must overcome these vested interests and, and we can do so. I think we, we really we believe in, yes, we can. We <laughs> can have TTIP. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that is something where uh, the Chancellor Merkel and uh, the President Obama will really enter the history books in. I think the, the, the life-changing effect of such an agreement goes far beyond what people in the street would, would, would think that this is just about bringing down uh, some tariffs with a few uh, percentage points. It's much more. It is a a, a new economic world we are entering it. I remember when about 20 years ago after the fall of the Berlin Wall uh, we introduced a, 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 a round of uh, uh, free trade in Europe in particular, the single market, you remember all that, but yep. also going beyond that we created WTO. The result was globalization and today people stand in front of globalization speechless and say the world has totally changed because of that. 500 million people out of poverty, China becoming a, the next superpower. It's all because of globalization. And uh, the, I think the, the switches which we are to, uh, about to, uh, the levers we are to, about to pull now will have similar effect. It will change the world and it will change the world for the better. It will bring us together in, across the Atlantic. And uh, of course, uh, the temptation is always there to 
uh, to, to, to have your own regulation. So one side goes, one, 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 when, when, when the automobile was invented, the British decided to drive on the left side of the road, on, of the road <laughs> and uh, continental Europeans drove on the right side of the road. I'm no, not saying that one solution is better than the other, <laughs> but you have to make life easier and safer. You, you have to uh, pick one solution, either on the left side or drive on the right side. Yeah, I, I, I think the reason that the Brits decided to do that was because that's the way they straddled a horse, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I'm not sure what the Continentals did, but in any event, uh, the other issue that I always think about when you mention that very concrete example is that when I go and land in Berlin, I have to bring out four or five different things that transfer my, mm -hmm. my charger from my, uh, of my iPhone, yeah. that's a silly thing to have to cope with and we could get rid of all of that. But is it about um, also the ability to create standards? Uh, often the discussion is about that. In other words, it's not just about 800 people getting together with each other. We're trying to raise standards that go well beyond the European and the transatlantic community, right? Isn't that the idea? Well, well it's not directed against the rest of the world. It's not uh, Europe <coughs> and America ganging up against uh, others. China is often mentioned in this context. Right, exactly. So what we think is that we set an example, and we have set s such examples in the past, and others are invited to follow. Hmm. But uh, it, it, is, it, it turned out that the idea that we can have a multilateral forum like the WTO where everybody sitting together talking about standards and rules and regulations, that th this is not a procedure that, 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 that will lead to success. This is simply an experience we've made. And so now we go back to the old concept. We start among two very important blocks, bring them together, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that once we have decided on, on, uh, on, on electric sockets, which you mentioned, the rest of the world would, will follow. And the examples you gave, the electric sockets, which are different in, in, in America and in, in Germany, uh, these examples touch only the surface of a problem. Right, exactly. We are we are living in in, a, in an era where technology develops very fast, and as we speak, new new standards are defined by those inventors, mm -hmm. and we want that the people who design the next smartphone will design standards in a way that their uh, computer can talk to our computer right. and, and the market will not be separated by different standards. Right. The, the, the wider the market is and the, the more uniform the standards, uh, the, the bigger competition will be and the more the consumer will, will, will benefit. But they're going to have to see that, isn't that right, Mr. Ambassador? I mean, people, consumers probably will readily see the advantages of that. They're probably going to have to demonstrate it. They're going to have to illustrate it because one of the problems that I see, in, at least on this side of the ocean, is that you do have standard vested interests. Let's take, for example, the people that are worried about exporting beef. Mm -hmm. You know that story, you know it well about the way that we wash our animals, chickens in mm -hmm. particular. Mm -hmm. All of that got in the way in the past. And I guess that's why my initial question is, those problems are still there. I mean, we still have to come to grips with the fact mm -hmm. that there is mm -hmm. a different way of looking at, a, at the way we prepared our food. Um, not that we are different in terms of how we treat each other, but how do you deal with the style question as well as the economic question? Because there is style in this. Yeah, I think uh, there is, uh, and you touched upon one of the Culture, hottest, maybe hottest the other word, potato yeah. uh, to, to, term, yeah. to use an agricultural term yeah. uh, in, in this context. Yeah. Um, it is, when it comes to preferences people have, right. they are very reticent to, uh, to accept other people's standards or, or, or habits. And I think it's quite natural. There are quite many things which I don't like to eat. I'm, I, I must admit, when um, I know when when my mother served me uh, liver, I, I refused to eat it, and <laughs> and I don't. I think we shall not uh, try to give the impression to our voters in in, in both uh, both sides of the Atlantic that we try to, we will literally try to push something down the f their throats mm -hmm. against their wishes. Mm -hmm. uh, in the end, I think it, uh, it, this dispute, which, is, uh, which, ha which has been turned out to be very, very difficult uh, in the last years, might offer us a chance to do something totally different. M maybe we can empower the consumer, mm -hmm. give the, give the com Choices. consumer the choice, Choices, yeah. and create transparency, right. create trusted institutions that will 
issue certifications, what it, what, what's in the product I, I eat, right. and then leave it to the consumer. And I'm pretty sure, should the European consumer develop a dislike for hormone-treated beef, mm. I think the American uh, producer, the American manufacturer, will be uh, very swiftly uh, be, be uh, clever enough to pr produce something that his customer wants. It's interesting that you say that because, you know, um, you've been out to Chattanooga, I think, mm. and mm. you see what Volkswagen is producing for an American uh, yeah. audience and uh, uh, consumers. I think that's that's the, the open door and uh, the illustration. Let me broaden the lens a little bit more and let me ask a, a couple of questions at the end. There are some people that say this undermines the WTO mm -hmm. because it does go below mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. surface. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that? Is there a problem there? Not at all. No. Of course, we all had hoped that uh, we, we could s sit together among how many, I think, 180 member yep. states in the WTO now. And after a uh, 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 long powwow, I think you say in the Indian language, yep. uh, some, something concrete would come out. Uh, it didn't. But uh, we, we can look at past experience. And I remember that, I think it was in the early 1990s, uh, a similar effort uh, of a multilateral agreement uh, in the, the, what, what, what was then called Uruguay Round right. failed. And uh, the conclusion was that uh, in North America, the US, Canada, and Mexico said, well, let's try a less ambi ambitious appro approach regionally. NAFTA. And we created NAFTA. But when NAFTA was born, everybody else f found out that they would be left behind. And they, hurried, they, they jumped on the train, which had left the station. And as a result of that, the, the WTO was created. So there was a huge push. push. Uh, to the benefit of multilateral trade arrangements afterwards. I, I, I could imagine that this happens again. So this will be a catalyst in a way, a not, catalyst, not a threat. It is, uh, it, it is uh, a severe uh, example showing what's necessary. Yeah. Nothing is for free in this world, yeah. uh, but uh, what, uh, what we tell everybody, we are on a way forward and you are invited to join us. Right. Uh, do you think uh, that the EU, in looking across 27, almost 28 now with Croatia, mm -hmm. do you think you're all on the same page? Well, of course, there are uh, vested interests uh, in, uh, different in various countries, but uh, you can also look at one country and see different uh, strata of society who have different views. I think in the end, uh, there will be a huge bargain, a big mm. compromise. Right. And, and uh, what's necessary is political leadership, because what I'm afraid of is that uh, such uh, negotiations can get bogged down in, in, in small things, in integrity of negotiations, and people lose, uh, uh, lose hope that in the end something big can come out of it. I believe that the pressure this time is, is so high and uh, I said it in the beginning, why? Uh, and of course, uh, political leaders have invested so much capital. The president has invested political capital yeah. by m making this his issue in the State of the Union speech in February. Mrs. Merkel has done just the same thing. Right. So our leaders are now really engaged, and I'm, I'm very confident that in the end we will see a result. You know, uh, we just finished a paper, which I think you have a copy of, uh, which talks about TTIP, mm -hmm. and I entitled it Boring Hard Boards. And you've studied Max Weber, and <laughs> I've studied Max Weber, <laughs> and we know that's what politics is all yes, about, boring yes, yes. through hard boards. This is going to be not a, a, a light board. This is going to be a hard board. It's a hard board, but it's worth the effort, I believe. And we should also th not forget that America is doing a similar enterprise across the Pacific the and t uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that oh, both, TPP, right, both, yeah. both enterprises, both efforts will, uh, will be successful. And what we will see then is a, a huge area of, uh, well, where the consumers have better choices, government procurement, will have a bigger choice to buy from. Um, uh, innovation uh, w w will be encouraged and supported on a wider scale. Uh, I think really this will bring the world forward. 
But Ambassador Ammon is going to take more than one tank of gas, don't you think? Well, I think um, the, the risk I see is that we get tangled up in these small issues and then say, we have time, let's talk about these so, mm. uh, chicken broth uh, <laughs> or whatever it is and uh, then it gets endless. So yeah. I think it, it was very wise that the president has set a time limit and I believe uh, this will be uh, an enormous uh, part of his legacy. Yeah, let's hope so and also for, for Germany as of well. Course, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir, for coming by. We Thank will discuss you. this continually. It's <laughs> always nice to be with you. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Peter. Thank you.